Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad with another video today. Um, I got a promotion that's running right now with Premier Leather Crafters uh, on some custom knife scabbers and some custom knife sheaths. Depending on where you're from, some people, the further south you go, uh, I guess it just depends on how back, far back up in the woods you are before you call them a scabber or a sheath. You know, it, they're the same exact thing. Um, it might be some technical differences in that. Maybe uh, a sheath is a one solid piece. Maybe a scabber is a two separate piece, but it's all the same thing to me. It's all a knife holster. So it just depends on who you're talking to. So if somebody asks you, can you make a knife scabber? Yeah. If somebody say you can make a knife sheath, yes, it's the same exact thing. But uh, what I'm doing, I'm running a promotion right now. And actually I give the knife away with the, the, the sheath or the scabber. So it, it just kind of make it a little bit more, uh, give it a little bit more value to it. But anyway, I'm showing you guys how you can do a custom knife sheet. Uh, you can go out and spend the money on these kits if you want to at these different um, cr cr leather craft supply stores or leather stores. But you can make your very own right there in your house. As always, I try to tell you guys about saving money. So here today, well, we didn't have any cereal boxes. You know, we still got cereal in there. So, uh, but I ran out of coffee. So guess what? I got my good old uh, coffee box that I tore up, tore apart, and I have my knife here. And actually, we have se I have several knives here, and you want to be careful with these um, so you don't get cut by accident. But this is one, I have one here, uh, I know the tactical guys are out there, uh, you also your outdoor guys, I got two different colors of these, black and brown, so customer get his choice or whatever. Um, I also have another uh, uh, para knife or, um, that's out here, and a lot of times they come with a, a little uh, sheath or holster with them, but I... Uh, we're going to scrap that. That nylon thing is out the way. You know, after a while, it starts to fray or whatever. But we're going to give customers something that, that's going to be theirs and they can have it for a long time. And these are universal knives, so you can go and find these anywhere online. Or uh, you might even, if you're going to design and make one, you may have somebody that want to make you a custom knife. There's a lot of people that's out there on the Internet that make custom knives, and they can make you one, and then you can make your own uh uh, sheath that goes with it. But anyway, I'm going to show you guys how to get off into making your very own. And what I've done now, I've already completed one, but then I thought it would be a great idea to just say, hey, look, you know, some people out there that may want to do one. So I'm going to show you how to do this very simple. Uh, first, I'm going to take my, my ruler and I'm going to cut all the old extra flaps off. You know, we don't need that. And I'm going to give, give myself one straight line. One straight line here. Because this is going to be the outside edge of my, my knife. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in a quarter inch um, on all the way around. So I got a quarter inch basin sides around my blade. Because I want my blade to fit centered inside of that scabbard. And so I, I give, that gives me enough room to uh, stitch around the outside. Or if I want to, I don't like using metal. Uh, in a lot of my pieces, I use the least amount of metal as I can. Metal promotes rust. If you guys have been following me on the videos, you know that already. And uh, But if I want to stitch or if I want to do an inlay, I have enough room to on that outside part to do the inlay. Now, what I'm going to do to make this, this sheath or scabbard the exact same shape as my knife, I'm going to come in and lay this blade right here on my edge. And I'm going to... Take this and trace around, around that. And you want to be very careful because, again, it's a naked blade. And, you know, uh, if I cut through the pencil, it doesn't matter. But your fingers are down here, too. So you want to give yourself enough room. And we're just going to trace the shape of this all the way around. Move this protective point clip right here. And gonna, so I can have that nice rounded shape to look just like the knife. Then we're going to move it to the opposite side where I'm going to do the back side. Now, once I get to here, I'm just going to draw a straight line here. 
because this little indention or this little curving part right here doesn't matter about being in the inside because the blade, we want the blade to be centered. And as long as I know that the blade is centered, then this little part here doesn't matter. So I'm going to come back and do the outside of that. And I'm going to draw this line all the way up until where it starts to dip off into that curve right there. Then I'm going to take, set that to the side. I'm going to take my ruler. And I'm going to finish that off with a straight line. Now, we have that. That's the outside portion of our, our knife scabber. And then I'm going to come in, like I said, a quarter inch. And I'm just going to make a little tick mark all the way around this. Because I know that quarter inch is going to be where my blade needs to be in the center of this. So, that's just on one side. I'm going to come in and lay that blade down on those little markings. And then I'm going to trace the blade exact. Exact. That's what I want to do. I want to trace it the exact shape of the blade. Now, once I get up here to the top where the handle part is, you see how this has a little dip and curve like little motion here? I'm going to put the butt of this blade all the way on the end of my my cardboard here. I'm going to make sure that's centered just like the drawing is. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my pencil and go right up under that blade and draw the exact same shape of the the handle right here. Now, why are you doing that, cowboy? I tell, I tell you exactly why we're doing this. I'm going to trace that little side out. The reason why we're doing this is when I get ready to put, holster this thing, let me put this tip back on here because we definitely want that to be, we don't want to get poked accidentally. Now, the exact reason why I do this is because when I put this thing and I holster it, I want this to go all the way up to the butt. So this butt will rest on my leather. I don't want any blade part to be exposed so I can stick it all the way down into my holster. Now, you'll see some scabbers out there where they'll even come all the way up, halfway up to the handle. Not halfway up, but a little bit bigger than the handle just to compensate this. And they use, they do that as a locking mechanism to keep the, hope, keep the knife in the holster from flopping out. But here's the thing. I don't because... When I get ready to grab this, I want to be able to grab the entire handle at one time. So if I'm coming out that holster, I want to be able to have my hand all the way wrapped around the handle. So I can do whatever I need to do. If I'm in a tactical fight, you know, hey, boom, 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 I'm already ready. Or if I'm just out um, in the woods and I'm using a skinner, if I'm getting to skin a deer or skin a, a, a raccoon or a rabbit or whatever, I still got full access to boom. And my hand is all the way wrapped around this already. So that's why I cut that little indention out. But I just do that to the front side. The back side of the knife scabber that's closest to your body, it doesn't matter. That's going to be one solid piece, and we'll get to that. So now what I want to do now, I'm going to tell you guys about cutting the line out and cutting the line in. Now, cutting the line out You'll see, you'll notice that a lot of crafters will do that on a custom scabber or any, even a custom holster. When you cut the line out, you're pretty much saying that I'm cutting this true to size. I'm cutting it right and exact so it's spot on. But I'm going to give myself a little playroom and I'm going to cut the line in. So when I get ready to match this piece up with the opposite piece, then I'll show you guys then. So right now, this is my front part of my scabber, and I'm going to cut the line in. So what that means is I'm going to cut on the outside of my pencil mark. So when this is cut out, you'll still be able to see the pencil line on the, the template. Now this is very key for future down the road in the next segment of putting this thing together is cutting this line in. We want to cut the line in. 
cut the line in. I'm cutting the line in, and I'll show you this as soon as I get done cutting that out. Okay. Now, if you can see this, you see what I mean by cutting the line in? This is what I mean. Cutting the line in, and that's where I know my blade will be centered. Those are my tick marks that I showed you about drawing the line of the blade. So when this goes in here, and then there's my little indention. I'm going to cut that out, and I'm going to show you real quick. Now, when I cut this little indention out, I'm going to cut the line out on this. Because I want that to be right and exact. Because that's just the, like I said, the back side of the, the scabber is going to be up against this. So, now, here we go, people. See how that fits down in there? Just the exact shape. Let me show you that. So when this goes into this scabbard, it's going to fit flush and the butt is going to rest right on top of this leather piece. Now, being at left hand or right hand, which a customer will prefer or they'll specify when they order from you, then it's just as simple as a matter of moving this piece from... Now, if, if I'm right handed, it's going to go on the right side of the blade. So my solid piece will go here. And if I'm left handed, guess what? Bow! You just move that to the opposite side. And it's the same exact knife. So it's just going on the left side. Simple process. You don't have to do this. Uh, it's not hard. That's what I mean. You do have to do that, but it's not hard. Then I'm going to take this up and I'm going to use my cellophane because I want to preserve this. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait till after the video before I do this because I want to keep this, you know, and use it later on down the road. Now, what I'm going to do, I know that this piece is what I want for the front. So, I have to cut the back the exact same so it'll match up and mate. Now, here's the difference is I, I need my, and this is going to be a right-hand scabber, so I need to flip this over. And so, that way, it's going to fit this way and it'll go onto my right side that way. So, not a problem. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to match this up with my cardboard down here on the bottom. And I know that I'm going to trace the bottom side out exact. So my front and my back will definitely match and mate. We definitely want that to match and mate. And I'm just going to do the top portions. Let me slide this over so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to do the top part, but I'm not going to draw or trace the entire piece, and I'll show you why. All right, from here to here, this right right before it gets ready to slope off, and this point here, I'm, this is where my, my belt loop is going to go. So it's going to go straight up this way. So I'm just going to draw or trace it like this, and then I'm going to take my ruler and go up six inches. And the reason why it's six inches, and that'll probably alter or change depending on the knife carrier themselves if they want it to be further down their hip or, or down their leg or they want it closer up to the hip. So, but I just do six inches. So I'm going to put my ruler here. I'm going to match this up with the top so I can make sure I got a good straight edge. So there, this is what I mean the top. I want to make that flush so I know my line is straight. And then I'm just going to go up six inches. Now I'm just guesstimating that that's six. I'll check it in a minute. But I just want to make sure that the line is straight. And we're going to put that there. Now we're going to turn this around. And I'm going to measure from the top of this to six inches. And that's a three inch loop. You have to double it up. Because you're going to fold this over. So when you fold that six in half, it's going to be three on the front, three in the back. And your two, your inch and a quarter or your two inch belt will easily slide through that without a problem. Now I'm going to draw my other six inch line there. And then I'm going to draw a straight edge across the top here. Let's let me match that up and make sure that that's straight. There. Now, <clears throat> you can leave it squared. If you so choose, or uh, you can use your strap in cutter and put that on there. I'm going to go a little different. I'm going to take my edge slicker handy dandy. Again, you guys, 
not any extra product that I'm buying or purchasing out there. Just going to make that center. And then I'm just going to round this off. Just to give it a little character. See that? Just round it off. And I think that's a little crooked. As my, my grandma used to say, I think that's a little crooked. A little cricket. So we're going to just round that off even better. Perfect. And then I'm going to cut that out. Now my handle part. Now I know already that I traced it the exact size as my front. I mean my handle is not really matter. So I'm going to cut the line out on my handle. Nothing else is going up there to match up to it. So the handle it's good just like that cutting the line out now when I get ready to get down here to the bottom I'm also going to cut the line out because it's going to be an exact match on this I already know that I got a little bit of room here so I know it's exact so I'm going to cut the line out on the back piece now what do you mean cowboy about cutting this line out what is that for when we get ready to match these two parts up, it might require a little bit of sanding work to make sure that everything is even, which is um, pertinent to making sure that it's going to be a good quality product, especially when we get ready to slick these edges down. We want those edges to match up perfect. Now let me round this off with my utility knife here. And again, the handle, you can cut it out all the way. And now we have our scabbard. We have our template. And I'm going to cut this line out on the bottom because I know it already matches my front piece. Now, here we go. This is where the magic happens. I'm going to take this and match these two pieces up. And they should be identical. There we go. Match that up. Get this lined up. See? That's identical. That is good. That is great. Now, uh, we're going to take this. Tape it up with some cellophane, and then I'm going to lay this on top of my, my leather, and then I'm going to cut it out on my leather, and uh, depend again, depend. I'm going to make this a right-handed a right scabbard, so I know that this is long enough, so when I get ready to fold this back over, boom, we're good to go on that, and just going to stitch that, do our board and our tooling work. Now, here's one key thing before I let you guys go. We're already at our 17-minute mark. But here's one thing that I want you to be uh, cognizant of or aware of. When you cut this out onto your, your leather piece or your leather, not the leather piece, whatever. Um, let's say, for instance, here it is, because I have plenty of remnants that's left over. And this is the great part about saving remnants. You can make stuff like knife sheaths, gun holsters, and all of this kind of stuff. That's why leather crafters, we don't throw anything away. So I'm going to find a piece of leather remnant that's going to match up and made up perfect with this, which that's not going to, this is a little bit too big, but here it is right here. Ha, I found one. So I'm going to move this over just a little bit to make sure that I, because I'm a still can use some other stuff out of it, keychains, whatever, bracelets, all of that good stuff. Now, here's the kicker. One you have to be cognizant of is what size you're going to carry this on. So if you're right-handed and you draw this out on the wrong side on your leather, then you're going to have a left-handed scabbard when you really intended for it to be a right hand. So um, this back piece, I need my smooth side to be up against me. So, hey, I'm going to trace this out on the flesh side. That's one thing. So I'm going to trace that out on the flesh side. That's one. And two is when I get ready to trace this out, one thing that I do want to do is I'm going to cut it out square. I'm not going to cut it uh, the exact shape, even though I'm going to trim my shape, trace my shape out the way that I want it. And I'll show you what we got here. Um, I'm going to trace this out exact. 
and then I'm going to take my front side piece and I think this is going to match up perfect down here on the bottom it did matched up perfect so I can get this one scabber out of these ramnet pieces here and I'm going to trace this out exact alright so now this should match up to this perfect okay I got my flesh side front and that should match great very very important make sure that you draw those the same exact way so they will match up and be perfect with each other and you only have to do one like I said it's just as simple as moving the front to the other side and then it's a left side holster moving into that side right side holster now for the sake of the video you guys will need to see me watch uh, film this on I mean tape watch it tape it up now when I put these two pieces together uh, um, I'm just going to cut these out square leave them just like that and I'm going to cut this end off here cut that off and the reason why I'm doing this is because when I get ready to start tooling this as you can see here this is what I mean when I get ready to start tooling this um, just in case my leather starts to reshape or move or slide a little bit it's, it's not going to make it move at all too much so when I cut it out after I tool it then it should be spotting dead on and then once we match them up, we're going to take and put it on the sander and we're going to sand it up to make sure that all the sides are true around there before we get ready to stitch it and draw a line to it. I hope this helped you guys got it started. Hey, look, play around. And it, this is not a, a tooling exercise or a tooling tutorial because uh, I think you're far enough along now where you can tool it any kind of way you want to. And maybe I'll do another video about an inlay to show you how this thing that like to goes for an inlay where you can put snake skin behind it or ostrich skin or crocodile skin just to really make it a unique piece. But anyway, I thank you guys for chilling with me these 22 minutes. This is Robert the Leather Cowboy, Premier Leather Crafters, and I'll see you guys in two and two. So, hey, appreciate you. We'll holler at you. Peace.